If you're after this part of the hall, it's like the one thing you see is the Indy Megabit sign. Can we go up a little? Up a little? It's weird to see how far it has come in just two iterations. Having such a large part, I think we're literally the largest booth at PAX at the moment. It's such a strong statement about how varied games can be and how cool it is that something like this exists. Super Joystick Podcast Special Indie Mega Booth Edition. Today on the show we have uh, Kelly Wallach. I am the uh, Indie Mega Booth Overlord. Say, say it with passion. Overlord. You should. Oh. You should. Oh. Is that look like tackle right, right, right. at the end? Indie Mega like, Booth Overlord. Uh, like both Overlord. Right. My name is Kelly Wallach, and um, three years ago I came to PAX as just a fan of video games. And shortly after that, I was helping out at the Firehose booth uh, at PAX Prime. And we were up on the sixth floor. And it was a great show. I, I don't want to complain, but something we noticed was that the foot traffic was lower. There were fewer people going up there. There were a lot of people that didn't even know there was a sixth floor. And so Aton had the idea that, you know, we're both in Boston, and when we get back and we do PAX East, we should just find all of our friends in Boston and buy up this, like, whole show floor, and then people would have to come and see us. At the same time, it turned out that this was a lot of work. And my girlfriend, Kelly, says, well, why don't you let me take it over? I'll, I'll do it. And I'm like, please, go crazy. It'll be awesome. I've sort of always been in leadership roles, I guess. And most jobs that I've had, I just default to having some sort of responsibility. Like, technically, I'm, you know, helping to negotiate, you know, rates and space and locations and, like, a shoulder to cry on <laughs> type of thing. Like We are about to go through every... Uh, game that will be playable. Almost every game. Which is just the worst idea in the world. <laughs> oh Oregon Trail Director's Cut. Raise the Dead. Jungle Rumble. Drunken Robot Pornography. Guacamole. Uh, some company named Vlambeer made a game called Fishing Something or Other. And one That's sentence why someone should play it. Rami will come to your house and personally hug you. <laughs> we have 42 booths. We have 50 developers. We have 62 games that handed in their press kit information, so that probably means there's 65 or 70 because I'm sure we didn't catch them all. And that sort of brings me to where I am now. This has been like six months uh, that we've been working on this, that we started putting stuff together, and then uh, probably the last like two or three months have been the craziest. All the last minute like logistics and emails and things and sort of like a bit of uh, panic this morning on like is everything actually going to be ready? Is everything actually going to be there? Am I going to get here and like I, I don't know everything's going to be on fire or something. It's, it's here and it's going so it, today is actually like today's a good day. <laughs> With the Mega Boost specifically well, I mean it's huge exposure and at this point like we've gone to GC and we've done that whole thing but it's not super helpful to us anymore because we're at a point where the game is just on its way and all we're doing is making content to finish it. Octodad, Dadliest Catch. An octopus father with a human family who are none the wiser to his secret identity as a non-human. And I'm gonna add that you f***ing need to play Octodad, yeah, yes, Dadliest yes, Catch. Because yes, 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 the game can. is amazing. It's the most mind-blowing game with like it's, an octopus. It's the most realistic octopus simulator I've ever played. <laughs> yeah. <It is. laughs> We've got like three or four levels that are like pretty polished and they feel finished. I always wondered that, like whether I would actually even like our game if I wasn't making it. I don't know, it's hard to say. Like that's kind of like the motivation or some of the motivation to keep going. It's just like, if we find it funny and we've been playing around with this for months and well, years now, hopefully that means other people will too. Most of us have day jobs or part-time jobs or something else we're doing to actually make ends meet. I can put this in here, it'll be easier so you don't have to. Yeah. Did you just ruin the whole booth? Probably. If we didn't love this, I don't think we'd be able to actually do that. Perfect. <laughs> Done. <laughs> All right, let's go to the hotel. 
hopefully it works out and we're just trying to get as many people into the game as we can. And I feel like PAX is the best way to do that, just get people playing and talking about it. That's annoying. We checked this monitor at the airport and I guess it got broken in the bag somewhere. It looks like it got tossed, tossed and like hit hard in one of the corners. And now it is broken completely. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that looks can, great. Maybe, maybe it's salvageable. Yep, you can almost see him. <laughs> I've always been really impressed with how good Phil is at what he does. If you need him to do something, you can always depend on him. He's probably one of the most, most dependable people I know. I actually didn't really think of this until somebody told me at PAX Prime the whole reason that they wanted to be in the mega booth was to meet other indie developers. And maybe some are in Chicago and some are in the Netherlands and some are in Australia, but you're still like doing the same thing. We're not competing with each other. We're competing with obscurity. If you have a customer that goes out and buys an indie game, it's not that they bought that indie game and they're not gonna buy the other ones. They're actually much more likely to buy other indie games. Boston's really nice in that there's no publisher presence. There's only developers here. It's really weird. I don't know another major game development city that has that. This space is called uh, Intrepid Labs. And uh, in the past 12 months, we've put together something called Intrepid Arcade. And it's, you know, a half dozen indie game studios all working in the same space. Uh, you know, we're helping each other out with building out games and also working together at PAX. Um, we're all going to be participating in uh, the indie mega booth. When it comes to what the limiting factor is for indie games, it's really awareness. You know, what's the big problem on the App Store? It's making people aware that you're actually doing something that they might like. You're right up alongside all these titles coming out from AAA studios, but now we look like a AAA studio because we're all together and we're taking up as much room, we're making as big of an impact. So we got a new monitor from another one of our teammates and it was also broken. slightly broken. So we wrapped this, one of our new t-shirts around it. At this point, I feel like it's a bad joke on us. Yeah. It's 90% functional. It, yeah, it's 90% functional though. So I guess that's what we'll have to go with. The developers love to see people playing their games and being able to get this really sort of critical feedback from people that aren't already, you know, your friends or fans of your game or something like that. It's almost like your kid's first day of school in a way, like you want, you don't know how they're going to do and you've kind of been preparing them for this and it's scary but exciting and fun at the same time. Are you the creator of Octodad? Yeah, I'm one of them. Oh. Yeah, one of the eight. Dude, uh, I love Octodad so much. Oh, When I tell you. you guys you're going to be here, I was really excited. Oh, awesome. First of all, Dadliest Catch. I don't know who came up with that, but that's awesome. You know, it was actually one of the that names like, we were like kind of like on the fence idea. about. Yeah. And so we put up all our ideas on the Facebook and just let the fans vote. Oh, really? And they picked that. As a video game developer, you always end up caring about your player a lot. We make the games we want to make. We really care about those games. So we really like hearing people talk about it. I like to make sure to, you know, go around and talk to developers about how their projects are going and what the challenges are and what they did to overcome them. I have some information that I can give them or I can put them to somebody who, you know, might be dealing with the same problems. I don't know, it's, it's rewarding and I feel like it's probably not going to sink in until I've gotten some sleep after GDC, but I mean, I'm pretty proud of this. This is a, this is a labor of love and it was a lot of work and to see it come together is, is nice. Next question I always get asked is, um, now what? Like, what happens with the Indie Mega Booth from here? Uh, so, I mean, besides the sort of global domination, like, theory that I have in my head, I would really like to see the Indie Mega Booth become a place that we're building a community for indie developers that they can, you know, help and support each other. And, you know, people work very, very hard to make this happen. And um, I think it's important to understand that, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I guess pulling the strings and, and running things together, but it's really all of the people that work hard and, you know, really make this happen. We had a lot of people at the booth, had some people from like Adult Swim and stuff like that drop by, which is really cool. I'm excited. If we don't do well at launch, we're in trouble because if we don't end up making enough money from this, then we can't really continue as a studio. 
Uh, it's just not, it's not feasible. Like you go out in that big release and you've seen amongst all these other games that people respect and enjoy. And I think without the Mega Booth, we wouldn't have that as much, uh, that kind of attention, like recognizable mass where people know to go for all the really cool, interesting, weird games, which is what we are. Indie is becoming such a significant and relevant part of what gaming, what gaming is about. The Indie Mega Booth, I consider it a gesture of what Indie can be if, if people work together. And that's great. That's, that's, it's an amazing opportunity.